It is a question that has been pondered, argued, and fought over in bars and arenas all across this country. Who's the greatest hockey player to ever play the big game? There's only two names that are really a part of the conversation. People go Gretzky, or people go Orr, and uh, well, most people say Bobby Orr. The scrawny kid from Perry Sound changed hockey. No defenseman ever played the game the way he did. Bobby Orr, behind the net, the center, and Orr! And while his career was cut short by a pair of battered knees, man, did he burn bright. The only defense person to lead the NHL in scoring did it twice. Eight consecutive Norris trophies as the league's best defenseman. Two Stanley Cups. If he played today, his salary would be $4 billion a year. Bobby's finally written a book. It's called My Story. And there's so much we want to explore with him. Those glorious years, the pain that came with the discovery that his friend and agent Alan Eagleson had left him in financial ruin, as well as Bobby's ideas of where the game can go today. Ladies and gentlemen, number four, Bobby Orr! George, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. It's so yeah. rare to be across from a Boston Bruin. It's so strange. <laughs> and a Habs fan. And a Habs fan, no less. That's right. Congrats on the book. Thank you. I mean, Thank it you. is the iconic image. Is that the picture you wanted to be on the cover? Uh, I, the, the publishers chose that yeah. picture, so that's... You always had such an interesting relationship with your own success and your own goals. You've always been kind of quiet about it uh -huh. all. That a book of your life and my story is a very celebratory tone. Yeah. Was it strange for you to get into that? Uh, it was. I've been asked many times about doing a book, and uh, I, I just didn't feel that I... Uh, I didn't want to do a book just to do a book, and I didn't feel that I had enough good stuff. <laughs> that I want whoever reads that book, I want them to take something from it. Even for all of the accomplishments, you didn't play in the era where players got paid that much money. So well, we, we did pretty well for the... For yeah, the, but it's nothing like what it is now. No, 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 it's right? not like it is now, no, but... Uh, the, the money doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I think there are players out there that the money really bothers them. Uh, what bothers me is, is that I want to see a player play at his level more consistently, mm -hmm. you know? And everyone can't be Sidney, but Sidney's up here. He's kind of in a world by himself. Yeah. Uh, but he plays at that level consistently. I mean, uh, uh, Wayne did. Uh, every night, Wayne, Wayne was there at his level. Now, your level might be down here, George, and the only thing... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it, it, the other thing that bothers me is when you, when you see players that don't play, you know, Sid's there, you're there, play, the, play at that level uh, consistently. It's interesting about your book, because so much of your story for a long time was, was you tied to Eagleson and the money thing. For the longest time, you didn't even address him. Mm -hmm. He just talked, but then there's a chapter. Yep. But his name doesn't come up, <laughs> and then there's a chapter, and then it goes away. Well, you know? I, I didn't. I didn't want to do him. You didn't want to mention No, him. I didn't even want to make him part of the book. I didn't want that to be the, the, the place everyone went. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know, he was your agent and things were sure. Yeah. Um, you have to. And he was right. They were right. I, I had to do something. I've heard you say that you're over it, right? And which you have to be in a way to yeah. put it. Does forgiveness play a role at all? I don't think I'm forgiving. I mean, yeah. uh, he hurt more people than me. <laughs> I mean, he stole from the players, uh, the players that he was representing. I mean, I mean, his life can't be, can't be good. I so mean, he spent a little time in jail. He was stripped of his order counted, out of the Hall of Fame, was disbarred. He's a convicted felon. That's, 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 <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty bad. <laughs> right. To me, I saw a clip of him talking about you. Just talk about how your family and all that. And I, I wondered how you felt, like, when you hear that. I'll play it for you, but just your reaction when you see this kind of stuff. I'm not sure I've ever seen it. No? <laughs> From that time when Bobby was 14, uh, he's, he's really been part of our house, household. Uh, as a young brother, more than as a client, he was the first uh, hockey player who decided that, uh, that uh, a lawyer could help him discuss uh, with his family his career in hockey uh, from both sides of the table in a bargaining position. I, I'd, not, I'd not seen that. Well, that's how I looked at him as a brother, and, and he did not uh, do me any good. 
Give you a unique perspective on how to represent players, though, wouldn't it? Well, it does, and and you know, we're just talking to the players. Pay attention. We have to pay attention to what's going on. There's there's so many things I want to talk to you, story why related. Number one, the rivalry against I know about the Habs, but the, the Flyers business. That stuff between you and the Flyers is some. I, I think about it now when I watch fights in hockey and I watch you know concussions. You hear all these stories, and I think about that that '70s run where you guys and the Flyers were just. It was unbelievable. It was like warring tribes. They may be. They may have been the, the toughest team I ever played against. They were they had a lot of tough players. They didn't have any soft players. No. <laughs> <laughs> the tougher place to play was it's your team. My God, the Habs, yeah, the Habs, man, yeah. you knew you better be moving because they could skate. They always well, I, had a great skating team. I called my uncle. My uncle Paul is the biggest Bruins fan I've ever met, and I called him and said, "Hey, we got Bobby Orr on." He says, it's amazing, what are you going to talk about? And I said, his book. He goes, yeah, I saw him on Mansbridge. I'm like, great, this is what? He goes, hey, ask him a question for me. And I'm like, all right, Paul, whatever you want. He said, this is the quote, what the f happened in 71 against the Habs in game two? <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said to me. He's like, you know, he exactly can said. We call, can we call him? You can go, I wish I could call my uncle. He's like, wait, he's probably right now, just, he's on the golf course. He's like, what happened in game two? And seriously, you remember a game from that long ago? He goes, they were up 5-1, what happened? Why would, you, why would he bring that up? I don't know. I mean, my God. <laughs> I mean, you got videos of Eagles and your, your uncle, my God. I'm supposed to be enjoying this. You are, yes. <laughs> but I was amazed with, well, I'm glad you brought it up, Paul. You're a Bruins fan. <laughs> Stick around, more will probably be right after this. <laughs> So great to have Bob Yor in the red shirt. Imagine all the greats he played with, including Gordie Howe. What's it like to get smoked by those elbows? We'll find out next. He's our next challenger, number four of the Boston Bruins, Bobby Orr. <laughs> are you a player now? Yes. And you are in one of the original six teams? Yes. Are you Bobby Paul of Chicago? No. Are you Bobby Orr? Bobby Orr. He is indeed. <laughs> Bobby Orr. We got him right away, pretty much. Bobby, Bobby Orr, front page challenge. Bobby Orr here. In the front That's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Oh, my God. One of the greatest things about the sport, I think, is one of the reasons why the sport has just become I don't know how they're ever going to deal with the concussion issue safely. Is it just the rinks are small and it's fast? The players are so darn big. Oh my gosh, they're big and strong, fast. So we're going to have injuries. And but we got 12 months a year now. We got to control. I mean, unnecessary fighting. I mean, throw them out. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care what they do. You used to fight though, didn't you? I heard, you know, I thought Pat Quinn smoked you that one day, and then the, the legend is after Pat Quinn smoked you, you smoked oh, him. I beat the dirt out of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really did, right? I hope Pat's not listening. No. Yeah. <laughs> but you did. He, he hit no. you, and then you went after him. That was, hey, that, but then that was fine. Yeah. And then, then it was fine. I, how about this I, clip? I, Let's go back. Watch this clip here. Makita's helmet goes off, and Orr took a right-hand swing at Makita, who goes down on the ice. As off went the helmet on Makita, and then Orr hit him. <laughs> I mean, that was you laying down the law on the ice. <laughs> I mean, I'm, he was a Blackhawk. He deserved it. I must have got up on the wrong side of the bed that day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do that? Carry that on the ice? Had a bad day and go, that's it? Someone's going to pay? Oh, well, I always have bad days. <laughs> 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 but the players are getting it. They're, they're being much more careful now. But we, by taking fighting out, I think that's a huge mistake. Yeah. Uh, just have it there. I've seen some wonderful games this year. No fighting. Yeah. Good hitting. Good plays. No fighting. We're talking about hybrid icing. We're talking about fighting. The guy that's been weighing in it regularly, and for most Canadians, new Canadians, in fact, I think he is the most famous Canadian ever, oh. is Don Cherry. Absolutely. Who's your guy? Yeah. You know, and it's interesting <laughs> that this coach-player bond, I think about Gretzky. Gretzky, you know, Gretzky's it seems seemingly out of the game. Let me use an owner. You don't hear much about him. But in terms of superstars and coaches, it's you and Grapes, man, you and Don Cherry. Don is, is I mean, you have to walk down the street with Don. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, he's the most popular person. He's the Pope, in, man. He's, he's unbelievable. And, and I do write in the book about Hall of Fame induction for yeah. Don. I really, you know, contribution to the game. What, what this guy means to our game is enormous. Okay, so when the debate comes out, who's the best player of all time? It's Gretzky, it's you. People talk about that all the time. Anyhow. Cordy Howe is the best. Howe. However you want to play, longevity, tough, finesse, Cordy. The guy's incredible. He's a, he's, you took he's, an elbow from him early, My right? first game. Your first game? I think, he, I think he wanted to know that the big guy was still around. I mean, but yeah, my, I was watching my pretty pass. 
<laughs> and I was going around the net, and he come, came across. <laughs> and, you know, I'm looking, oh, that's a nice pass. Boom. <laughs> Down. <laughs> pleasure, man. Thanks, George. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bobby Orr, so that's the book. It's called My Story. We'll be right back.